This week, we've seen massive improvements in large language models, mostly from really big companies, but also from companies that pride themselves in open source, like Mistral AI with Mistral Large. And these models are really cool because they're incredibly capable and they can do so many things so well. But my favorite part of making videos on this channel is finding lesser known models that completely come out of nowhere and then end up quickly ascending to the top of their class, at least based on parameter count. And you guys have asked before where I actually find a lot of these. And to be honest, most of them come from the Open LLM leaderboard. Now, this is basically an aggregation of different benchmarks, and of course, different benchmarks have different biases depending on who made them. But what I like about this leaderboard is they give you a nice sort of round number that gives you the relative capability of an LLM based on its parameter count. For instance, here I'm just looking at 7 billion parameter LLMs, and they basically average across six different benchmarks that the researchers at Hugging Face find most conducive. And since it's Hugging Face, I have to assume the researchers that are picking these kind of know what they're doing and also have relatively little bias since most of what's being uploaded here is inherently open source. So for me, these models really are only interesting if a new model comes in that is at the top of the class for its parameter count. And the sweet spot for me is really right around the top five or top 10 models in a given class, especially when one ends up in there that is technically in progress or that someone is actively iterating on. And a really interesting one popped up today, which is basically from this small consultancy in Europe called Bar AI, and it's called Jaskier 7B DPO version 5.6. Now, on the surface, this really probably isn't that interesting, but I think it's kind of cool that it came out of nowhere. And also now that it's been surpassed by its own merge, which is pretty interesting. And to be clear, this is a merge with itself that's actually performing slightly better than the model that was posted just a few hours ago. And it's important to note that these two models by Jan Peleg are actually benchmarks just to look at um, maximizing what's currently released by these benchmarks, and these are not actually models that are currently in the running. So is this model actually any good? How has it managed to get to the top of the 7 billion parameter leaderboard on the Open LLM leaderboard? And what is it actually used for? Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So when we look at the benchmarks here, so we'll notice that it's actually performing better than one, the model it was trained on, which is Paul ML OG 7B. And it's also doing better than the base uh, Mistral 7B and a number of other 7 billion parameter models we've looked at prior, uh, notably Faraday 7B and Laserpipe 7B Slurp, especially when we look at Beagle 7B, which is kind of interesting. And we even see Daredevil 7B here, well below the capability of Bard's AI Jaskier 7B DPO version 5.6. So the benchmarks we can look at here uh, range from ARC to Heliswag, MMLLU, Truthful QA and GSM 8K. And its performance here is pretty much what we'd expect across the board. It's just a little bit better than a number of other models. And it's about, I, I don't know, I would say, I don't know, 4% better than a number of other 7 billion parameter models we've looked at before. And an important thing to note here is that this is actually trained on a fine tuned or domain specific data set, in this case, math. But ironically, it's actually better at conversational back and forth than a lot of math topics, which basically means it's good at explaining the math it's doing in sort of an instruct tuned way, but I'll show you what I mean by that in just a bit. So what actually is this model? So again, they say it's a work in progress and isn't ready for production use. Granted, after the massive fumbling of Gemini 1.5, I think the definition of what quote unquote production use is, is kind of up in the air, but if you have specific ideas of what that is, let me know in the comments. These have obviously been downloaded a ton recently, and basically this improvement kind of came out of nowhere after a fair bit of iteration on the part of the bards.ai team. So what's interesting is this is a model that's from DPO tuned that was initially based on uh, Paul ML OG and 7 b which frankly was just a downstream version of Mistral 7B. Again, fine-tuned using direct preference optimization or DPO with Argilla and the still label math preference DPO. And what's interesting is this isn't just a coding model or a math model, it's still meant to be kind of a generally capable model, just with more focus and a kind of a direct relation to the DPO that was applied. And we've seen a lot of crazy merges. We've seen a lot of kind of wild approaches meant to make models more concise. Um, specifically, Mistral Next was another model that initially was produced just to be quote unquote more precise. But what I like about this is this Jaskier 7B DPO appears to be wanting to get that concise kind of output but in more of a conversational way. And they say conversational, not chat, because basically they want this to be a more 
um, smooth and easy to understand chat interface that is also very capable when it comes to math and reasoning about certain logical things that come up in conversation or that are common elements of kind of longer running conversations. So who is Bard's AI before we actually try this model out? So again, this is a small kind of data consultancy. They've won a number of different competitions. They have all kinds of scientific publications, a number of which are on Hugging Face, obviously. And their founders are here. So it's basically four people. They all have backgrounds in uh, CS, uh, working on AI, those sorts of things. And um, I'm not sure if I would hire them, but let's see how their model goes. All right, so let's try this model out here. All right, so now I'm in an endpoint I created on Hugging Face, and let's see how this model actually works. So the first question I'm gonna ask is, is Bard an ML engineer? So kind of a random question. We'll see if it understands that that's actually Google and see how the DPO has actually worked with this. So what's cool is clearly the information this model has been trained on is pretty good because it says no, Bard is an AI model developed by Google, and it doesn't just an engineer. Um, then it tells us a bit about Bard and what an ML engineer actually is. So this is looking pretty good so far. Let me try something else. Uh, let's say I want to bake some bread. So this is sort of a health question. It's kind of a baking question. Uh, since this is an instruct model, this could give us kind of a list, but since I'm worried about PFAs, that's hopefully what it's going to kind of do when it tells me what I might want to bake or not bake. I'm also curious to see how the consistency of this model is. So this is good. So it took uh, two tries, but here it told me what PFAs were, which are polyfluoroalkaloids. And uh, again, it says these are man-made chemicals. And what's cool is we didn't get a full output here because I think there's some limitation here I need to tweak, but it says, yeah, they're common in nonstick cookware and pretty much is telling me to not use that kind of cookware, but that for bread, they're generally not a concern pretty much because uh, as long as you're not uh, doing anything abrasive with these, they're entirely fine. Now, another thing I like to do is give these models sort of these initial prompts. And this is something that we sort of saw with Gemma where Gemma struggled quite a bit. And what I like about this is it leaves kind of an open end or an open tail for these models to sort of infer about something. And it's a really great way to line up a model to hallucinate, but also it shows how creative a model is. And gauging the creativity or how open-minded a model is, I think is kind of interesting, especially with models that are DPO tuned to be more instructive. So I'm gonna try this one here. So this is just, my name is Thomas and my main blank so it says my main hobby is photography. I have been a professional photographer for, for over 10 years, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what's cool is we're getting, okay, that's a, that's a decent amount of output from this. I have a strong background in variety. Okay. So now I want to do some more kind of logic questions. So I'm going to do my common livestock trading question. So, so this is a bit more complex compared to some of my prior ones. I've made these a bit harder just because I think it shows what these models can do a bit better. So let's see if this DPO tune of a fine-tuned version of Mistral 7B can actually manage this. I've also tweaked the model to be okay with actually giving me more output tokens. So let's see what that does. Okay, so it's reading it back. Okay, good. So it's, it's gonna break it down now. So good that we have negative 200, that's right. That's it. Now let's see if it understands that there are two transactions. So it understood going from T W O to S two, and that that was the number of transactions. And there we go. So it actually got this right and it left it all out for us showing its work right here. So that's actually pretty impressive. And it was pretty fast given that this is only running on a T four NVIDIA GPU. Let me try one more here. So I'm going to try a light coding problem. Um, so I'm going to say, uh, create a basic Python. Some of these smaller 7 billion parameter models struggle a little bit with, uh, I guess Python functions are coding where there's more of a graphical or kind of visualization problem. Geometric stuff generally goes pretty well, but let's see. Uh, another thing that I like to see is if it gives you an example of a function call and, and or like a few different test cases, and we'll see if this does that. And it's still thinking here. Great, okay. That was actually pretty good. And then for my final test, I'm gonna see if it can create a basic function in Python that can generate a Mandelbrot set. So it's really, really thinking on this one. We'll see if we can get something out. And it looks like that might've been a little bit too much for this model. I'm gonna try one more time just to make sure that for some reason my endpoint wasn't paused. And I think this might just be a little bit too much for this model. 
Yeah, so unfortunately it looks like coding is maybe not this model's strong suit when you give it something more complex than it really likes. However, in terms of uh, basic math and sort of logical reasoning, where it sounds very conversational but isn't really too cut and dry or just not fun to talk to like some instruct models are, this is doing pretty well. And of course, it's a work in progress. It's only a 7 billion parameter model, so we can only expect so much. But this is still really cool, and I still really enjoyed uh, messing around with this. So uh, I will say, I um, now with some credits that I have for Hugging Face, I really did like just spinning this up really quick, and I want to keep doing this to make sure I always have demos in the videos now. That was some feedback you guys gave me. I will say Hugging Face is probably my favorite spot instance GPU reseller for Amazon GPUs for AI stuff. Uh, I do a lot of stuff in my local dev machine, but this is just so quick and easy to spin up that, yeah, I really like the flow. So let me know what you think. Uh, would you guys use this model? Would you maybe not use it? Where do you look uh, in terms of leaderboards or notifications to find new models that are actually pretty impressive or are pretty interesting? I'm really curious to know. So as always, I hope you learned something. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.